right, Kirsten Gardner Morning Edition. Uh, it's always a sad part of the gardener's morning to wake up and check how everything did during the night. And I'm in that moment. Uh, but I'm sad because my squash have disappeared um, completely, despite the fact that I put like nets and this new product that I am not sponsored by, but I thought it would help. It smells disgusting like stinky garlic and um, other shit. Pet safe. It says, uh, it's like castor oil, lemongrass oil, cedarwood oil, clove oil. Actually could have made it myself, but I was in a hurry because the situation and the real story are right here, folks. And that's, that's when people start eating your squash plants for no apparent reason. Despite the fact that there's three layers of netting it's been everything sprayed with a putrefied garlic stench and yet someone has come in it, it's another atrocity friend it's another munching of the sweet leaf um i don't see how they got in i can't find the hole i don't there's no underground uh episode here who got in and clipped my fucking squash i just need to know these are the answers i need friends invisible uh stealth critters Stealth critters. I don't, I, I'm here looking at how I made the trap. I laid the wood down. I triple layered. I sprayed. Somebody ate the sweet leaf again. This is going to be the ongoing, you know, joke of the cursing gardener. But what, I mean, what the actual hell here? We were having a great time with the squash. Things were going great. Um, and clearly there's only two left out of the indicated six that I've planted. I'm sorry, that's nine, because I I could do three times three times three. You got to know math to be a gardener, friends. Look at this. Only two friends left. And are they going to make it? Because I don't know where the infiltrator is. So, cursing gardener morning bit. Bummed out. I don't know. Maybe this product is NG. It's fake. I don't know what to tell you, friends. Any tips? Send them down. All right, how's it going? Testing things out. Cursing Gardener out here with my uh, Fox Vision night uh, night headlamp for uh, night gardening. We're gonna try to see where the critters are, get into the real story, maybe do a video for an upcoming episode with you know Mr. Fox on the old noggin. So that's what's happening here. We've got three great guests for you this week. They're all from the Midwest. We've got Jacob from Ohio, Sarah from Oklahoma, and Joe from Nebraska giving you the real story from the Midwest for our special episode from the Midwest with, oh boy, with love. That's love, y'all. Hi everybody, uh, this is Jacob here at from Cincinnati, Ohio, doing a little guest uh, spot for the Cursing Gardener. I'm going to do my best to curse like a sailor. Not very good at it, so uh, fuck, and I'll try. Now, before we walk over to the garden, and I know that's a big part of this show, is the, the walk to the garden, we need to spend a minute um, and, and honor the passing of my, my, my trees. And they were here. There was a evergreen tree in that pot, and in that pot, there was another evergreen tree. Now, wondering, and I'll tell you the story as I walk to the garden, you know, what, what happened to those trees? And it's a fair question, um, they died. Now, you, then you might be wondering, well, how did they die? They're evergreens, they should be evergreen. And, and I would agree. Um, and the first winter, they were just fine. This winter, they both, they both died, they were completely brown. So I had to pull them out very sad so anyway it was it was depressing heart-wrenching um, but life moves on and we've now made it to the garden so uh, shit here we are I love that dude I oh man that was a classic I love that dude I hope he comes back Jacob from Cincinnati please send more clips that's the real deal that's the midwest sauce um i'm really excited because my friend sarah from oklahoma uh found something strange on route 66 and has sent in her um sort of guide tour of this 
um, odd, I guess, giant blue whale. Have you heard of this? I don't really have like a guide to the oddities of the US, but that apparently is a big thing out there in the old Oklahoma. So check this, check out the inside of this blue whale. Inside. So now we're gonna walk inside the mouth of the blue whale, you know? Feeling a little bit like Jonah right now. Right. Here's the blue whale's mouth. Gonna go in it. <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> Ooh. Looks safe. <laughs> There's its lovely tail. This is also random. This used to be a swimming hole out here until 98. I don't know what happened. In 98, I don't ask questions, you know? So that's that's how that goes. There's the, the tail and the head. Can't really tell right now, can you? There you go. So I'm going to walk you over here and show you um, what you see over here. And I don't know if I'm going to have the angle right, but you'll see all those little boxes of, uh, where people can rent a little spot. I think it's really cheap, like $25, something like that. And it's just starting to go about it. We've really had shitty weather here. This is one of the first sunny days, and it's partly cloudy, that we've had in like two weeks. So that'll start to perk up as the season gets longer. But as you look up on the hill, here's the real travesty. Look at that. I asked the guy to just kind of clean up a little bit, and what he did is he just tore everything down. There were trees and everything there. He just took a fucking chainsaw and tore it up. So that's what's happening here. How's it doing, Buck here? Uh, helping out here at the at the garden with a uh, raspberry plant, uh, a bush planting. Uh, have my gear on here to give you some suggestions on what one might do to safely uh, plant a bush. Um, first thing is to make sure you have protective headgear. Uh, there could be arboreal litter falling from the sky and you don't want to injure yourself and it's also protective eyewear in case of hawks or other flying objects next you're going to need something to protect your hands we hired a cameraman we're just working out our whole rhythm uh this will help it. what the hell's going on here people these are hand protectors in case something happens when you are attempting to plant the bush, but if you notice here, it has spiky foliage. I've also brought many extra pockets in case something should happen. Or I should mention the significance of footwear if you wouldn't mind coming in closer for a look. I like to cover my legs fully to the knee in case of any sort of tick or ant activity, as well as a nice rubber grip on the bottom of my shoes. <laughs> When I fall down while planting the bush. <laughs> Cut. Now I'm going to talk about the importance of rocking out. I think that's one part of gardening that's highly underestimated and not valued nearly enough. It's important to make sure you're vibing with the space of your plants. I personally like to pick a Scott McKenzie song called uh, Wear Some Flowers in Your Hair. Right now I'm going to demonstrate rocking out before we plant the bush. 